Uh, today we have Eduardo Diaz. Uh, he is an elect uh, representative from uh, Naralo, as well as he is the uh, you know founder uh, of NASIG, North American School of Internet Governance. Um, uh, Eduardo has been a pioneer in, 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 in the field of uh, community engagement. He has been supporting youth leadership and, and has been very supportive to, especially to uh, young leaders who come from uh, lower economies and, you know, has that uh, very motivation uh, coming in from. So Eduardo, let's start uh, today's meeting uh, with your brief introduction and, and, and then, you know, we will have a, a full-fledged interaction. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, being here today. I was invited uh, to, to you know to talk to you about at large. I uh, and uh, also I can tell you uh, you know about our, our my region, which is the North American region, and it you know you can ex extrapolate from that because almost all regions are doing the same thing with at large. I don't know. I'm going to talk a little bit about me, so you know you can put myself in context why I'm here in ICANN. And then we can talk about at large. I don't know how much you know about at large, but I can give you my experience with at large and give you some uh, tips on, you know, for those of you that really get interested in continuing your journey to, with ICANN. There are a few things that I did that worked for me. That doesn't mean that it will work for you, but, you know, I, I always recommend you to do uh, the things that I'm going to say. So I am uh, Eduardo Diaz. I live here in Puerto Rico. And uh, that's where the ICANN 79 is going to be. So I most probably will meet you, all of you, in person when you come here. I know Natalie is coming down a few days before. She's participating in our school, the North American School of Internet Governance, which we uh, abbreviate NASIG. NASIG 2024 is happening three days before ICANN. So Natalie will be able to tell you all the insights of, you know, when they, she meets you at ICANN. Uh, in any case, uh, if some in uh, my specialty is wearing in electronics, uh, computer design and information systems. Uh, I've been working with the uh, internet since 1981. Since that's when I started my career with AT&T Bell Laboratories. At that time I was connected to the ARPANET and then it became the internet. And we used to connect, uh, I used to work in this research co company, it's called AT&T Bell Laboratories. That's the company that people know because that's where the transistor was invented. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> I was in that research company and uh, we were able to connect to the different universities through the internet at that time. So I, I have been sending emails since 1981 and know about TCP uh, version four uh, since then. So I'm very acquainted with the internet, and then the internet became uh, mostly commercial in the 1990s. Uh, and that was an evolution that happened because the computers at the beginning, these PCs that I was using, they were all character oriented. They were not graphics. Uh, graphics, CPUs, the, that's the, uh, uh, you know, the computers were not that fast uh, to, to, to handle graphics on real time. So, you know, they, they have evolve into uh, what the computers that we have right now that are, you know, almost impersonal. You cannot detect when computers doing graphics. Well, anyhow, so, and I have done all kinds of things. I, I, I worked in the States for about 10 years in New Jersey and then came back here to Puerto Rico to work for the telephone company. Uh, I was able to create the biggest ISP here in Puerto Rico called PRTC.net from the telephone company. It still is the, the biggest ISP. I, and I finished, I uh, retired from them uh, in 2003, and uh, I founded the Internet Society of Puerto Rico here in 2001. And I got involved with ICANN in, ICANN's, in, ICANN in 2007, believe it or not. That was, wow, 16 years ago. And the reason I, involved, I got involved in ICANN is because we have a CCTLD here in Puerto Rico named .pr that we were looking into getting more about it and, and, and work with them together. So we got involved with ICANN. I mean, I got involved with ICANN in 2007. That's where the first time that ICANN came to Puerto Rico. That was the first time that the fellowship program, that's when it was created. And it was created here by Puerto, in, in, by people that, uh, the dot PR people in here in Puerto Rico in 2007. So to make a long story long, it took me about two, three, 
four years to get acquainted with ICANN. ICANN is a very complex uh, uh, organization, uh, as you may know, and uh, as you're going to see, or uh, some of you have been, I don't know if you have been a fellow before, but if you're new, it's a very complex com company organization, but it's not complex in terms of the stuff that it does. That I mean, some some of the, some of the things that they we do in ICANN is is complex, but it's because all the abbreviations that you have to learn and all the organizations and what they do and, and the, the way they look at different from different sides the DNA system. Uh, and that's the complication and how, how you know, it, you know what the GNSO is, you know what the alert is and what it means, you know, generic names, uh, support organization and the CCNSO, country code support organization, so forth, but okay, that you, that you know the names but what how how these organizations work within each other that's that's the difficult part we all know that ICANN is a multi-stakeholder uh bottoms up company and and if it's not the only one it's one of the only ones that have been formed that way and uh and the good thing about that is that you're able to participate in anything you want within ICANN if there is a working group or cross-working group that you are interested in working in, you can sign up for it and you can participate in those working groups. Nowadays, uh, working groups before they were so big and with so many people sometimes I was just a mess to, to, to manage. So now there are working groups that you say, okay, we need people from XYZ and organization and advisory group that will represent your organization in this working group and you have a right to vote or reach consensus or what have you they do their process but you can become an observer in that working group and learn how the processes uh, uh work so I'm, I'm telling you this because this is some of the things that i i, I did uh, and and i will talk about at large okay but if since you're coming in into into uh icon uh, and, and, you know, you will see, and if you haven't, you will see a range of possibilities out there and range of organizations and a range of things that each organization do. But, you know, and, and from a large point of view, uh, the alert is basically, uh, you know, when the, there is a policy development process, which I think all of you know what that is by now, uh, in this policy development process, you have interest from the people that have the money, the contracted party, the, the people that sell domains. And then you have interest from the people that are in the domains, but they are not, they don't sell it, they use it at, you know, NGOs and, and MPOC and and, and 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 people that buy domains, but they are not, they don't, they don't sell it. They are not in the business of selling and, and buying and selling. But then, and all these people get together to do policy, and the alert comes in with the interest of the end user because mm -hmm. the policies that are made in ICANN has an effect in ep on everyone, including the end user. Which, you know, if you look at from a perspective of the interest of the of the interest of the end user, we are all end mm -hmm. users, including the people that buy domains, including their families, including everyone. So a large really brings that interest into the policy development process. Why? Because at the end, we all get affected by whoever, whatever that happens in ICANN, even though it's domain related. And one, uh, one example that I can give is DNS abuse uh, as a result of some of these things that are happening that, 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 uh, that we're trying to control in one way or another or educate the public about the DNS abuse. So a large, let me tell you about large and, and, and what I have been doing in these 17 years. Uh, uh, when I started in a large, I, I really, you know, the first thing that I did is I went to the NOMCOM to the, uh, and, and the NOMCOM is the organization that selects, even though it says a nomination committee selects people to a certain numbers of, to the uh, uh, board and people in different uh, organizations. Uh, for example, in a large, we have 15 um, members in a large. 10 of them, that means we have five regions, which is uh, North America, 
Africa, Europe, Asia, and uh, I'm missing one, uh, Latin America. That's five, okay? So each one of those regions, they select two members to go to the advisory, to the, what is called the advisory, a large advisory committee, uh, I get confused, ALAC, advisory, uh, believe it or not, I, you know, I, I, I use the, the, the abbreviation so many times, ALAC, but anyhow, that's the advisory committee from a large that provides advice to the board or any organization or in any issue. Uh, uh, it, it, that's a big difference between the GNSO, which is only DNS, you know, it's, it's a block on, around the DNS. So all the advice that they provide to the board, and even though they don't do any advice, everything they do is around the DNS. Uh, and and you will see there the NCUC, the um, Non-Commercial Users uh, Stakeholder Group, I believe it's called. The NCUC, they provide uh, a, a you know, they get involved with the GNSO, but it's all around the DNS uh, from the uh, uh, end user perspective, but it's only DNS. At large, is everything. Uh, we, to provide, we can provide advice on human, human rights, uh, uh, DNS abuse, uh, budgetary things, and things like that. So we are, we are not constrained only to, to DNS, but all the other governance things that happen around ICANN. So, where I was? Oh, I started in the non-com, which was very, uh, a very good part of, you know, of, of, it was very good because I learned there, uh, you know, how all these organizations integrate and, and the way they think about where they're coming from when they are selecting people for the board and other organizations. So I was there two years, very enlightening. From that, I moved into ALAC, the advisory group as per se. And, and all the time that I was doing the uh, ALAC and, and, and have been, and I'm now still uh, an ALAC member selected by the NOMCOM uh, member, uh, I did, and I recommend that you all do this if you want to continue your journey through ICANN. Uh, first of all, you know, once the fellowship ends, uh, really you don't, and you want, you want to continue to participate, you should get involved with those working groups that you really are interested in in in, in, uh, in what they're doing, uh, and even though if you are not in other groups, behave but behave in a good manner. Uh, the way they think, the way they look at things, that you from the end user part will look at differently. But understanding how they do things, and the way they think about it, because there that's you know if if I'm a, a, a person that I'm in the business of making money. I will look at policy and continue to be interested in IT. So uh, that helped me in my in my time over here uh, that I've been doing these 17 years. Uh, you know, um, in in understanding ICA in a better way. And even though it took me about three or four years to get really comfortable, I would just say, to know, you know, what's happening around me in ICANN outside a large uh i'm still finding areas that that i'm surprised that i don't know about it that that uh and, and it's good i mean it's, it's, it's there's something always something new and um, let me tell you there are things that i don't care that i don't you know that policy that i see that i say i'm not going to get involved with this because it's going to suck my time and and i might you know I, our time is limited we are volunteers so you better take your time and use it in something that you feel you will be more effective on. And that's what I have been doing uh, later on. Sometimes uh, we get so involved and we get so involved in so many working groups that at the end, you know what, you don't, you don't, you don't have the time to do all, all of it in an effective way. So if you know if you work in one working group or two working groups, I would be fine, you know. Uh, as long as you can provide uh, inputs into what is being discussed in that working group. Uh, and uh, after, you know, have, so I have been in a like I have been in non-com two or three times. I, I recommend you strongly in your journey through ICANN that you participate in the non-com. The reason I'm doing this, saying this is because of the discussions that happen there 
it happens and and you will see there better than working in a working group how these organizations look at people from different angles and it's because they come from different backgrounds different organizations so it's very it's very uh, uh, a very uh, enlightening uh, experience uh, you know you will be better rounded by participating in the non-com however when i started in ICANN, i started in the non-com and uh, uh, and i would not recommend that with the non-com the way it is right now because really 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 you need to be you at least you need to have several years of understanding these organizations and how i can works and how organizations interrelate so when you go to the non-com you have that knowledge and will help you uh, in understanding this discussion that are happening sometimes uh, because you know where the people are coming from. So uh, so don't do like me, so I just came to, into ICANN and, go into, and I went to the not come right away. I mean, I learned I learned fast. Uh, I learned from other people and I was able to be effective as, as, as much as I knew at that time. Uh, and I have been around many, many uh, working groups uh, and there are two of them that I feel uh that i made i was part of a group that made a big uh changes in icon there were two of them one of them is i was invited to the uh, meeting strategies working group many years ago and it's its focus was to look at the meetings that that i can uh was doing at a time i think there were three or four meetings that uh, you know, through the years and people felt like we were in the same meeting, you know, we were doing, we were doing meetings all the time and they were not, you know, they were out of focus and things like that. So I was able to be the straw man person that created this, this uh, group, these meetings that we have now, like the community policy and the AGM. We rearranged that and, and, and we also work on trying to get slots that people did not have meetings so people could go to plenaries without having conflicts with uh, their own organization having meetings at the same time i know it has been challenging many times but that's why when you, we do plenaries you will see slots in the schedule that says plenary and there's nothing else why because we wanted everybody to go to the plenary so those are the things that we did and uh, the work that we all did in this group made a big change uh, on the way we do the meetings uh, now uh, through the years and now we are more focused on, on what the meetings are all about in fact the meeting in the meeting in in the middle we call it the policy that's and, and we say look we, we cannot be there seven days just make it short brief talk policy and nothing else that's why you don't see a welcome ceremony that's why you don't see a gala well that's why you don't see uh, people, uh, you know, with uh, uh, vendors putting kiosk to promote their products. It's no, nothing like that. There's no public. I don't think there's a public forum there too. I mean, that's just public. It's, it's policy, period. And also when we change, uh, before there was a public forum at the end of the meeting. And we say, no, 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 no. Well, let's have one previous to that one. So you can bring, you can bring an issue and if the boards uh, might look at it and say, oh, uh, let's, we will get back to you, then you can go back to the second public forum and say, hey, I mentioned this, I don't know, Tuesday, and today is Thursday. What's the answer to that issue that I mentioned? You know, you can do that type of stuff. That's why we have two public uh, forums uh, now. So I felt that, you know, that working group has a big effect in how we do business, the governance of ICANN in terms of the, their meetings. The other group that I had a chance to go and I was very, very uh, eager to participate was the uh, IANA uh, transition uh, group. And uh, and I was a voting representative and I wanted to make sure that I had the, the, the uh, not the power, but the, 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 the uh, responsibility that I could vote for this you know, whatever we were doing with the transition of Ayana. And that group was the one that basically uh, curate, created the PTI, which is the Ayana function. And everything related to that came out of that group. 
and I was part. I wanted to make sure that I wanted to be part of that group uh, because what was happening at that time was historic. And I said, I, that's where I want to be, uh, to be part of that history that made this transition from NTIA of the IANA function into ICANN. So those are uh, things that I was aware of, uh, and I made sure that I was there to participate. Uh, but if you're not aware of what's happening, you will never, you will never have an opportunity to say, "Hey, I want to be there," you know, uh, or "I wanted to be there" because it's very, very uh, has a big effect in, in, in not only in, in ICANN, but uh, the the fact that ICANN became really ICANN after NTIA. Uh, so. Uh, just those two meetings uh, were, uh, I mean, those working groups are part of my uh, background that I always will remember. Uh, the A, like the advisory group, it consists of 15 people. Ten of them are selected from the regional at large organizations. And the regional at large organization, which I say there are five, they're really an abstract construction, okay? And what I'm saying is an abstract construction. Just give me a second. What I'm saying this is, is an abstract construction is because it's a framework that was created to provide some kind of structure to all the at large, you know, to be able to spread out the message around the whole globe. Uh, the only thing, you know, if you look at the uh, uh, I can buy laws, the only thing that really it's uh, has, uh, I, I don't want to say jurisdiction, but it's created as a such, is the advisory, uh, a large committee, an ALAC. Uh, that's that's the, the entity that is recognized in the bylaws as an organization. And, and people get confused with ALAC and at large. And ALAC is those 15 people, at large is everyone, you know, everyone out there, that's at large. And and then uh, instead of saying it everyone, then we say, well, we have five, five, let's create five regions. And each region is going to be called a regional, a large organization. And most of the uh, responsibility of the regional, a large organization is usually create, you know, send two people to the advisory, select two people to the advisory group. But also most of the work that the regional large organizations do is outreach and engagement, you know, being out there and, and, and engage people, outreach people and engage uh, it so they can become ICANN fellows, they can, you know, engage them into the ICANN, into the ICANN work. That's what the regional organizations do. All the, you know, the capacity building in the regions, the regional and large organizations consist of individual members that are interested in, in participating in, in the region, but also organizations like I belong to the Internet Society here, uh, Internet Society of Puerto Rico, and we call them at large structures. Those are organizations that have memberships or what have you, you know, we have like 500 members. So messages that come from ICANN that we think are very important or, uh, or opportunities for fellowship, opportunities for whatever, we send that information to my membership. And some people get interested, some people not, but that's a part, that's part of the message. When we talk about the DNS abuse and how to make sure you don't do, uh, you're aware of, of the DNS abuse and things like that, when we get that information, we pass them along, sometimes from the Internet Society of Puerto Rico, they are large structure. We provide webinars, you know, how you can be more aware of how you protect yourself from phishing and malware and stuff like that. So. You have the at large, you know, the, the ALAC, which is an advisory group, 15 people, 10 from the regions, five are selected from the NOMCOM. So it makes the 15, okay? I'm this the, in the current period now, and I'm, my period ends in the next AGM. Uh, it's, I was selected by the NOMCOM. I applied to the ALAC for North America for a position that was open in the NOMCOM. So the NOMCOM selected me to be part in part of the advisory group. So that's the 15 people. And then you have the regional and large organizations, which are named RALOS, that consists, like I said, of individual members and organizations. But that structure is, is 
it's, it doesn't advise the, the it doesn't advise the ICANN. Usually, what happens is that the two representatives that do ha you have in the advisory group, and and you have issues and things that you want to advise, then you have to bring that from from the RALOS into these two people to bring into ALAC. Okay, if there is an issue, then that needs to be discussed. But uh, once you are in an advisory group that A, like then you are really uh, looking at things as a group, uh, even though you represent an organization way down in, in your region, there, you know, you're supposed to uh, uh, to advise on whatever is being advised on in ALAC. Uh, so they say, well, you know, once you send those to people, they don't really belong to your organization, they're part of a group that they have a responsibility of advising. You know, if I'm from North America and 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 I'm representing North America and there, I'm going to bring the in uh, the the making sure that I'm going to bring the end user perspective from my region. You know? <coughs> like like for example, in internationalized domain names, when you talk about that in the US, there is not that much interest. Because everybody speak English mostly, you know, they're not like, you know, there are many minions that do not like me. My, my main language is Spanish, but you know, I, I was, I was uh, uh, learning Spanish since I was a kid, and I was lucky that I did. So, uh, but there are many pe millions of people in the U.S. that they don't speak uh, other languages, other than, than I mean, they speak languages other than English. But you know, there, this is an example that there is not that much interest. But now, if you go like to Latin America, there's a lot, of, a lot of interest in international domain names because they speak Spanish. That's the main language, and many people do not know English. And the same thing happened in other countries. So that interest, you have to bring it in. I mean, you bring it in, uh, and I'm giving this as an example. I'm not saying that it, it's, it, there are not people interested in the region about IDNs. I'm, I'm taking that as an example, but that I come from a, uh, a, 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 you know, from, from, uh, from, uh, area where connectivity broadband connectivity is not it is it's a big it's an issue because nobody not everybody is connected but it's not a big issue within you know when you take the whole thing in, 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 in as a whole so but that might be an issue in a different country uh, because of, of the conditions in that country so we bring different interests and that's what it make it makes it a rich and very uh, 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 you know, when you have different issues and different ways of, think, think, uh, of thinking and bringing issues from the regions, the end, uh, the end result is that you will have a better advice, okay? Because you have, di you have discussed this in diff from different perspectives and, and the consensus that you reach is rich. It's not only one person, two, two or three or four or five, it's, it's a group thinking. Uh, I mean, no group thinking, but a group discussion and a group consensus. So, so it, it it is very good. So, and and I'm not uh, I'm not sure, but Alarch is the only one that is is set up that way. Uh, that you bring people from all these regions. I don't think other organizations have that. Uh, in, in, in a way, it's structured, so it makes it better uh, because you bring people all the way to the advisory uh, group. So. Um, uh, so I don't know how many of you, uh, this is your second fellowship or the, of the first one, but uh, uh, I think this program is very good. Shredip, you have a very good mentor there. He's a, been a, he has been around for, for a long time and uh, so he has a lot of experience and knowledge. So, you know, every time you talk to him, ask him and he will be able to, uh, if he doesn't know the answer, he knows where, it's, where to get it. Uh, so you have a very good mentor with Shredip here. And... Uh, what can I say? You know, you will be here in Puerto Rico, and I will meet all of you uh, if I can. You know, because I, I, I have seen you. You have to come to me. I mean, I, I, I have. I don't have pictures of everyone here, but I'm pretty sure it's ready. Will will do that for me. Yes. So yes, certainly, we will certainly have a meeting with you. So you know. Yes. So that's uh, all I have to say. I mean, I can continue rambling around, man. But I prefer you if you want to ask me any questions, specific questions that I can answer at this point. Uh, I actually do have a question. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, um, so you mentioned that at large primarily focuses on the interests of end users. 
Um, but how does at large collaborate or engage with um, like other internet governance organizations outside of ICANN, like in the multi-stakeholder model? Uh, you mean like uh, ARIN or the IATF and the IGF and- uh, Yes, for example. Schools? Well, we do it mostly. Uh, I mean, ICANN is very specific as, as to what they do. They do, you know, their mission is uh, DNS, uh, to maintain this you know the DNA system working and secure and stable all that that's that's their mission so we uh in a large we are we consist of several uh organizations like for example in my in my organization which is ice internet society of puerto rico uh you know we we maintain contacts with arin we send uh, we, uh i'm talking arin because that's the american registry uh for for the region and uh, the same thing happened with LACNIC, uh, I mean, LAC, LAC yes, uh, and, and I, I don't know the name of all of them, or AFRINIC. And, and they have meetings and we send people to these meetings. We can get involved with them, the same with the IETF. Uh, but it's not through ICANN. I mean, we, 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 we know about these organizations through ICANN uh, because ICANN is, from all the organizations, the most important and biggest and of, of all. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, you don't have, like I say, if you don't have a telephone directory, you will not be able to call your body. Uh, that's what the DNS is. If there is no DNS, you won't be able to connect to a single person that I'm talking about. Uh, so uh, fr from the ICANN perspective, you know, all these organizations, they come to ICANN one way or another and you meet them and they are part of some of these organizations. Uh, I mean, the ICANN organizations, and you can meet them there. But we know we know ICANN and 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 some other organizations outside ICANN because we get involved with the Internet Society, for example. Uh, other organizations they get involved doing uh, internet governance forums and schools. Uh, it's part of their of what they do. Uh, as an, a large structure, it's it's not necessarily directed to uh, uh, to ICANN, but it's not I can. Uh, I wanted to say it's not that. Uh, it's 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 not. It 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 is mostly outside ICANN. Uh, it's what I'm saying, even though everything is related. I don't know if I answer your question. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Okay. So anybody else? Hey, I am the ICANN guru in a lot. <laughs> so true, so true. You are, you are. So please, if there is any question, uh, please put it in uh, because Eduardo is the right person. He has worked with uh, ALAC and I at large community. Uh, so 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 you you will have a good answer as well as a uh, good good mentor. He's a very 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 good mentor, and and in his. Uh, work process i mean to say the uh the nsig is also you know like it's, it's doing wonders for everyone so please any more questions uh while you come up with questions uh let me tell you five more people we're 15 but there are five additional people that are not part of the advisory uh role and they are called liaisons and these are people that are that liaise with the gnso ccnso RSAC, the GAG, the Government Advisory Committee, and uh, there is another one that I uh, forget. There are five, okay? And those liaisons, their responsibility is to leave, I mean, actually participate into those organizations, their meetings, uh, their working groups. And then what they do is they report back to an ALAC with issues where things are happening. Uh, there are some liaisons are participating in groups and they get really involved with the groups and then you know Ayla will look at it and uh, decide uh, if they're going to provide that advice or not but it wasn't really uh, a deep discussion about the policy itself when that happened so and it was happening all over the place so there was a point that I said okay well let's let's take all this policy that is happening around and everybody's doing and doing it right in here right and then it is consolidated into one working group where we can all discuss and whatever comes out of there is a, a, a result of the discussion and consensus in that group. That's what is called a consolidated policy working group. It's a, it was consolidated 
into that policy group. And if you really want to know what's going on in, in ICANN and the policy, well, many organizations are, gravi you know, are, are, are gravitating, I don't know if I'm saying that word, are, are moving in, they're coming into the CPWG, even though they are not at large, because they know that the discussions are there, our discussions are done appropriately. I mean, there is no pointing fingers on it. They're, we're talking about the issues. Uh, and, 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 and the, uh, the uh, space provides a way for everybody to comment on it and to discuss what's happening. So there are many people coming from other organizations into the CPWG, and I recommend any of you uh, to visit, you know, to, to come to the CPWGs. They happen all every Wednesday at a different times every week. So we take care of the time zone thought of it, you know, but we try to, to use different time time uh, zones. Uh, and uh, just to hear what people are talking about and, and see how the thing flows and all the policy that is being brought in. It's just, it's a, it's a very interesting, it's a, it's, a, it's a single place where you can really touch mostly all the policies that are going happen are happening in, in, in ICANN. So it might, it might be my recommendation that you go there. We have another meeting uh, uh, that happens weekly now that has to do nothing with policy, believe it or not. It has to do with the operation of ICANN, budgeting, the budget, and anything that has to do with the ICANN governance as a whole. So that look, that, that, committee looks at specifically governance issues like budgeting, uh, finance, uh, other issues like human rights and multi-stakeholder issues and, and discussions, things like that. So here we have a group in the large CPWU that does talks only about policy. And then we have another group that does only governance issues. You can come to both. You can participate in this. People like to talk about budgety things. This is where you go. If you want to talk about policy, you go here. If you like both of them like me, I go to both to both of them. They happen every week. So uh, you can invite it to that. These are open working groups. Well, everything is recorded and transparent. So you can participate and, and see if you like it too. It's called the OAF Operation and Financial and Budget Operations uh, and Operations Group, OFB as in boy, OFBWG, Operation Finance and Budget Working Group. And believe it or not, they're going to change the name again to make it more, more specific. Uh, so I don't know that that's in the, in the, it's been planned. So uh, that's what we do in a large. And uh, it's a fun, it's, I'm saying it's a fun place because you, you get to know people from all over. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's really a, 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 a multi-global group uh, because of these structures of regional large structures. And, I'm, and uh, that's uh, all I can say. So, so for now, so are there any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Eduardo, I would also like to add something, uh, you know, regarding the previous question, a lot of the ISOC, uh, uh, ISOC chapters are members of the APRALO. So, you know, like there is always, always that cooperation and collaboration that happens, you know, unanimously, it becomes the uh, member of the APRALO. Once you apply, you, you are taken up. So, uh, multi-stakeholder, that is the reason why you rightly said, you know, it, it is a you know, multi-stakeholder organization and, um, you know, the way it works is community, community voices, user community, developing the policy, though, though it, it sounds very technical. I mean, to say even, you know, what, what is your experience about ICANN? Like a lot of the people see ICANN as a technical organization, but a lot of the part is policy making. It's a civil society organization, if I'm not wrong, right? Because the technical groups are separate. The, the the you know civil society the policy making is 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 a different thing so what do you have to say about that um are you asking me what what do i think about that yes okay well look like i said before i said what is the mission of ICANN? to keep the dns working you know secure and this you know these computers and the system and secure and stable and all that stuff so you say well when you look at that mission, it's very simple, right? That, that's all. 
So why do why do we do we have so many working groups doing all kinds of stuff? Well, you know, you have intellectually intellectual property issues because domain names you cannot buy dot Coca Cola because it's a trade it's a brand name. Uh, uh, you cannot buy uh, 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 names that are confusing. That you know that if you use it with one accent, it gives you one thing. If, if you don't use it, or it, you know, like you, you things like that, uh, you get things like you know what is called typo squatting, which you know take Apple for example. That you know you have a Apple with two P's and then you put it with one P. Uh, you know how many hits you're going to get that way, and and as confusing for the people. So. Even though the, the, the mission is this, there are a, a lot of stuff that you have to do to make not only the technical stuff of making this secure, stable, and stuff like that, but all the other stuff that comes behind it. Because the computers will work, it will be, they will be secure, but the content of the DNS, the information that gets put in there, has to be appropriate. Uh, in the sense that, you know, like I said, uh, you cannot put... Uh, significantly uh, confusing names because we're going to get confused as end users. Uh, intellectual property, they have to protect the brand names. You cannot have everybody buying names back and forth. Let me give you one. Uh, uh, every time I people ask me what I can does, policy. Oh, well, you have a policy, but you know what? What's, you know, it's a DNS. What is, what is that important? Well, I always say this, this, like I give this as an example, and you can use this as an example. Many years ago, uh, you could you could bought a domain name, right? And you search for 30 days. And you find out that you know in 30 days or before that, you, that, that, that domain that you don't you don't like it anymore. So so you could have you could have return to return it and you will the you know the company will refund you the money that you pay for that domain. <coughs> you know, no cost. Okay. So, you know, as we all humans are and very inno innovative, there were these companies that they were buying millions of domains, literally millions of domains, and putting them in servers, right? And they will keep them there for less than 30 days, and they will see how many hits those domains get. So I don't know the thresholds, but you say, well, if this one makes so many hits, then that domain will pay by itself and blah, blah, blah. We will make money because, you know, every time you get a hit, you got a, 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 an ad there that will give me one quarter of a cent or, or some kind of monetizing. So I would keep those and I will return the, the, the whole bunch. Probably I would keep a hundred. I bought a million, but I, I kept a hundred as so I will return the rest. And imagine two or three companies doing this stuff. So what happened was that you were going, you were looking for a domain and it was taken. And suddenly, you know, people could not buy domains, uh, you know, the domains that they wanted. And, and so there was a policy change on that. And they say, okay, uh, we're going to return the money after 30 days, except $1. We're going to keep $1. Bang, the whole thing. It's not, you know, you know, it, it just wiped out the, that, that business. Why? Because before I could buy a million dollars worth of domains, right? Put in my, I mean, one million domains and X dollar numbers, put in servers, blah, 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 blah. We return it back. We return, I will get those million dollars back. But now, if I buy a million domains, it will cost me a million bucks. Even if I buy 10,000 domains, it will cost me 10,000 to do it before it was free. So I'm saying that is one policy change that had an effect around the world and it had an effect of getting rid of a, a problem like that. So those are the things that, you know, when you explain I can, that I can do, that's one of them, okay? Uh, and now it's becoming more difficult to do it, uh, okay? And, and then they, they are the things about uh, type of squatting, you know, when you have a brand name that, uh, like I said, Apple, and then it, it, it you know, uses one P, you know, what, what happened there? Uh, you know, they say how, how the company Apple can fight this other person to, or company to, to get rid of that uh, because it's confusing with my name and their policies that deal with that stuff. Uh, uh, that 
you know, when you look at the ICANN mission, which is maintaining the DNS stable and all that, part of it is that what is happening here with the domains doesn't get all the way to the top. Like an example of the Apple, you know, A-P-P-L-E. Uh, uh, you know, if I, if I were going to take a name, I would use Google, you know, G-U, G-L-E, because in Spanish, it's Google. <laughs> so they put an U instead of the two O's. You know how many millions of hits I will get every day just by getting that domain name? Millions and millions and millions and millions. And I will have one server getting hit all the time, maybe generating, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in hits every day. You know, that's that's the type of business that the domains do. So uh and and so I can it's it's good because it has a, it has a part that has to be is is, is technical. You have the root, uh, the RSAC. I don't remember uh, root server or root server security, something like that. And then you have the SSACs. Uh, there there are advisory groups. Is a, a um, ah I forget this. This those are very technical organizations. That's what I want to say. And the uh, the uh, uh, address organization, the AOS, uh, the AO, AO address organization or supporting organization has to do with the numeric stuff, you know, the IPs and everything related to IPs. That's, that's technical. That, that, that's the technical part of the, of the, uh, of that, of the ICANN. So when you say ICANN is technical, yes, it's technical in that sense, uh, they, that they, 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 they have to do all this governance things about the IPs and the, all the security and stability of the DNS. So yes, if you like that, there's a part, there's a, there's a place for you there. But most of what happened is on the, on the governance of the domain, the, the things that the domains are made of, which are characters and the things that you can put in there. That's where most of it happens. Uh, most of the policy happens. And, and, and also, uh, uh, you know, if you want to be a, a seller of domains, you have to have a contract with ICANN that allows you to do that. They have to recognize you as a, as a, retail, a retailer or re reseller of domains and you have to pay a fee every year. Uh, so that's another part, but that's mostly, you know, staff, that's the organization that does that. Uh, uh, I don't know when, it, you know, there are things that the community do and other things that I can as an organization does and it's contracting uh, is part of what they do. Uh, so there is anything uh, for everybody here in ICANN, but again, you know, there are other organizations like ARIN, which is technical, has to do with IPs and America and, and protocols and the IETF, that's where all the uh, little things and specifics and specifications for the internet are. And um, and there is the Internet Society, which is mostly uh, focused on maintaining, uh, uh, you know, an open and interoperable internet. And that's that we do a lot of capacity building uh, with our communities. Uh, uh, and and you know, like that, there are uh, other organizations that you can involve with that are other than ICANN. ICANN just happens to be the the biggest one. That's where everybody comes. Uh, uh, even though these organizations have their own thing, but they are very uh, specific to one thing. Um, so, did I answer your question, Trey? Yes, yes, rightly, rightly. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. Please, if you have any confusion, questions regarding what uh, Eduardo has said, please, you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask that question. Okay, so if, if not, yeah. No, no, I was going to say, I have to move to another meeting, but that's I still what. have two minutes. That's what, that's what. Uh, you know, the, the social media working group meeting is about to start. So, uh, you know, if you guys are also interested, I can send you the link. If you are interested, and I'll just post the uh, link here in the, uh, in the meeting as well. So, okay. So if you are interested, please do join this meeting. Uh, thank you, Eduardo, for joining in and like, you know, sharing your experience. You've always been been uh, a great leader and in supporting the youth and especially, you know, it, it helps. It helps sharing your experience and especially growing with the new community members who are coming in and who want to learn, want to share. So thank you. 
Thank you for the invitation and see you around in yes. ICANN 7 and welcome to Puerto Rico uh, whenever you come. Yes, thank you. Bye -bye. So I would officially end this call. Thank you all for joining.